In the last video, we talked about spanning trees, and there were words related to cut sets and cycles that appeared in the construction of a spanning tree. We defined the cut set rank and the cycle rank. And even though I said these are just names for now, there must be some reason why they are called the way they are called. And indeed, there are some relationships between spanning trees, cut sets, and cycles that are worth looking into to understand the structure of graphs. So let's start uh, doing that. Our first uh, thing that we're going to look at is this following uh, relationship. So if you take a graph, a connected graph, and you look at a spanning tree of it, so remember, a spanning tree is obtained by removing edges from the graph until you have no cycles more. So you have a tree with the same vertices as the graph you started with. So this spanning tree will have an edge in common with whichever cut set you have in uh, the graph G. And also, any cycle you have in the graph G will have an edge that is not contained in the tree. So why is that? Let's start with the cut sets. So if we have a graph G, say this graph G, and if I take a cut set of G, for example, I remove these two vertices, then the new graph will have exactly two components. It will be disconnected because a cut set is disconnecting, and it will ha not have more than two components because a cut set is minimal. We have talked about this. So the uh, uh, graph G minus S, where S is the cut set, will have exactly two components. So if you have a spanning tree, so if you have your graph G here that now became two components. I'm writing them schematically here as H and K. The spanning tree has to have an edge that goes from one vertex in H to one vertex of K. If it does not, if the whole spanning tree is contained inside of H and inside of K, that means that you will have some vertices here and there that are not connected by the spanning tree. This contradicts the fact that the spanning tree is connected, which a tree is, and contains all vertices of the graph. And since you have this edge, well, this edge has to be in the cut set, right? Because the graph was connected from the beginning, and then you removed some edges to make it disconnected. So uh, any edge that the graph used to have between H and K and has now been removed is in this cut set. And so since the tree has one edge here, this means that the tree has one edge in common with the cut set. In other words, this was a lot of words, so let's reformulate this. When you took away the edges of the cut set in order to make the, cut set, the graph into two components, it's uh, there is no way you could have missed an edge between these components. You must have removed all the edges between the two components. And since at least one of them, as we just saw, must be included in the tree, the tree will have one edge in common with the cut set. The proof of the second statement is much easier, simply because if you have a cycle in your graph, and the cycle is contained entirely in the tree, then you must have a cycle in the tree. But trees, by definition, have no cycles, so whichever cycle you take cannot entirely be contained in the tree. In other words, it must have one edge that is not in the tree, and this proves number two. Another way to state this part two of the theorem is by talking about complements. So, if you have a graph G, for example, this one, assume that we have this uh, blue spanning tree. Then the complement of this tree in the graph is the set of all edges that are not in the tree. 
So the red set. This is the complement of the tree in G. And so part two of the theorem says that any cycle has an edge in common with the complement of the tree. Be careful not to confuse this with the complement of the graph G. So if you have a graph, its complement graph G bar, that's the edges that are missing from the complete graph when you drew your graph. And now this is somehow one step further. You have a graph G as your universe instead of the complete graph, and you have a subgraph of G, and its complement are the edges inside G that do not lie in this subgraph. That was the first relation between uh, cut set cycles and trees that gives you uh, an idea of how these things work. Now we go one step further and try to justify the name cycle rack. So what we are going to construct is a fundamental set of cycles for a graph. So what is the setup? The setup is you have a connected graph G, and so you take a spanning graph of G. So let us, a spanning tree of G. So if we again take our previous example with the blue spanning tree, then whichever edge I add to the spanning tree will create a cycle. This is a property of trees, if you remember, among these many properties that adding an edge to a tree will create a cycle, and precisely one cycle. So for each tree, you can look at, okay, which cycles can I construct by just adding exactly one edge to a tree? The set of all these cycles is called a fundamental set of cycles associated with uh, the tree. So let's look at a more detailed example. Assume we have our graph G that looks like this. And let's call the vertices A, B, C, and D. Then one of the spanning trees, if I remember correctly, that we constructed the last time we looked at this particular graph was this one. So this is a spanning tree of the graph. Now, which edges can I add? Well, I can add this edge. This creates a cycle. So, so let's collect all our cycles in this fundamental set. So by adding the red edge, I get this cycle that consists of the double edges between A and D. Now what else can I do? Let's erase this red edge. Oops, I erased a bit too much. Instead, I can add this edge that's missing. And then I get a cycle ACD. Very nice. What other edges do I have that I can add? So let's forget about the blue edge. Let's add this edge. And then I get a cycle A, B, D. And that is it, right? So these are the cycles that I get by adding one at a time, the one each time, the edges that I remove to construct a tree. Note that you might say that, okay, but maybe why didn't you add the edge between C and B? Well, because there is no edge between C and B. I'm only allowed to add edges that were actually in the original graph. So these three cycles uh, constitute a fundamental set of cycles associated with T. And 
this associated with t is important. So if I had taken a different spanning tree, remember that to the same graph, you can have several different spanning trees, then I would get a whole different set of cycles. So this is something that is specific to t. So for this choice of spanning tree of my graph, I get this fundamental set of cycles. Now, any cycle in this graph, somehow you can get by gluing together and removing edges in these uh, cycles. So this is a philosophical point that's a bit outside the uh, scope of this course. But if I glue this red cycle onto the blue cycle and remove the edge that's in common, then I would get this other edge and I would get this other cycle. Uh, so in this way, I could roughly construct all the other cycles. So the philosophical point is that it's kind of a basis for the space of cycles of the graph, whatever that means. But just to give you a philosophical notion, you could think about this like in linear algebra, when you have a basis for a vector space, and then every vector can be expressed in the term in terms of the vectors of a basis. Uh, well, this is kind of the same idea. We will not go deeper into this, but just to give you a philosophical uh, meaning to what why we are doing this. What you need to remember is that to each uh, spanning tree, you can associate a set of cycles called the fundamental set of cycles associated with this tree, and this will be a set of cycles in the graph. Now, in this graph, we had three cycles. Uh, why is that? Well, in order to obtain t from g, we removed these three edges, the purple edge, let me draw them back, the red edge, and the blue edge. And adding each such edge gives me one of these cycles. So I will have as many cycles in my fundamental set as there are edges that I remove to get a tree. But remember, there is a name for this number. Well, it's three, but there's a different name for three in this uh, case. Sorry, there we go. Uh, and that name is the cycle rank. So this is the cycle rank. The cycle rank is precisely the number of edges we remove to construct the tree. So for each such edge, we get one cycle in our fundamental set. So any fundamental set of cycles associated to a tree T will have this number of cycles. And remember again that if I took a different cycle, this if I took a different spanning tree, I will get a different set of cycles, but it will also contain this number gamma g of cycles. So the cycle rank is called the cycle rank because it is the number of cycles in any fundamental set of cycles in the graph. How many times did I say cycles? <laughs>